and uh, he uh, got to hear Sunday morning's message. That's some good stuff. I always enjoy hearing Jimmy preach. I told him earlier he's the brains of the operation, and truth be told, he's the looks of the operation. I'm just the, I'm just the old donkey, <laughs> the old mule. That's all I am. But I appreciate you, Jimmy. I love you, buddy. Amen. Um, if you got your Bibles, go with me to the Gospel of John tonight. John chapter 16. Have you ever been told something that just didn't make any sense? When you, when you are told it, when you hear it, you wonder, what did he say? I want to preach tonight on what he say. Jesus here is giving some teaching concerning future events. We understand them now. But as he was telling these and preaching these, the people around him, they didn't understand what he was saying. And they kind of talked amongst themselves. And in uh, maybe our vernacular today, they kind of looked at each other and say, what's he talking about? What he say? Sometimes we hear things and we don't really understand them. But in John chapter 16, I want to read verses 17 through 22. John 16, 17 through 22. Some things in the Bible are kind of hard to understand. There's some things we read and they don't make a whole lot of sense. And uh, I know I've always loved uh, the story of Samson. I've always loved it since I was a kid. And I set my mind one time. I thought, you know, I never have preached Samson. I, I'd like to do that. So, of course, I prayed and told God to give me a message out of Samson. That was my first mistake. And uh, I went over to Samson and I tried hard as I could to put together an outline, Jimmy, put something together, and God wouldn't give me a thing. And it was almost like it was a scripture I'd never read before. And uh, sometimes the Bible's like that. Sometimes we'll read things, or maybe it's something that we don't understand at all, or maybe it's something that we think we should understand, but we just can't. I want you to see these disciples struggle with something Jesus says. John 16, verse 17. When you found it, say amen. Uh, well, let's back up to verse 16. We need to get verse 16. Jesus says, A little while... And ye shall not see me. And again a little while, and ye shall see me, because I go to the Father. Then said some of his disciples among themselves, What is this that he saith unto us? A little while, and ye shall not see me. And again a little while, and ye shall see me. And because I go to the Father. They said, Therefore, what is this that he saith? A little while? We cannot tell what he saith. Now Jesus knew that they were desirous to ask him, and he said unto them, Do you inquire among yourselves of that I said, A little while, and you shall not see me, and again a little while, and you shall see me? Verily, verily, I say unto you, that you shall weep and lament, but the world shall rejoice. And you shall be sorrowful, but your sorrow shall be turned into joy. A woman, when she is in travail, hath sorrow, because her hour is come. But as soon as she is delivered of the child, she remembereth no more the anguish. For the joy that a man child is born into the world. And ye now therefore have sorrow, but I will see you again, and your heart shall rejoice, and your joy no man taketh from you. Father, we stand before you just humbled and thankful. God, we know we're not worthy. We're not worthy of any of your blessings, but you're so good to us, and we're thankful for that. We pray, God, tonight that uh, as we stand before your word, that you'll bless its reading. We're very thankful for the fellowship, the, the songs, the hymns that we've sang together. But now, Father, we need to hear from you, and we pray that you'll speak to our hearts as only that you can. There's so much in your word that we struggle sometimes to understand. Open our ears that we may hear. Open our understanding that we may know. We pray all this in Jesus' name. Amen. You may see it. Thank you for standing with me. Can you see them standing around saying, what he say? <laughs> What's he talking about? Jesus here has given them, if you and I read this, the verse 16, we understand it pretty well, or at least we should. He says, a little while and you shall not see me. Now we know he's speaking there of he's getting ready to leave, he's getting ready to die, go to the cross. And then he says, and again a little while and you shall see me because I go to the Father. We know as we read on that he came forth from the grave and they saw him again. But uh, they didn't understand that, and they, and they just, you can see 17 and 18, uh, they just say, what in the world? What's he talking about? And as we read through the Bible, I think sometimes we still ask that question. But uh, tonight I want to show you a couple of things as we look through here. And I want to show, because I believe that we deal with these same things. First thing there in verse 17 we see, I think, is confusion. Uh, verse 17 says, Then said some of his disciples among themselves, What is this that he saith to us? Have you ever wondered what in the world 
is going on what's the Bible trying to tell us what God what are you trying to show me what's going on Lord uh, somebody said that we've got to go through hard days before you come but this don't make any sense or I don't understand this or I, I don't know what's going on and that I guess is the equivalent to the New Testament church of what's being said here sometimes we just kind of murmur amongst ourselves trying to figure out what God's doing well I'm glad tonight that God knows more than I know I'm glad that God's working behind the scenes for things that are uh, more beautiful and special than we could ever dream. But they're among themselves, and they're confused, and they say, What is this that he saith to us? We don't understand. A little while, and he shall see me, or shall not see me. And again, a little while, and you shall see me. And because I go to the Father, they say, Therefore, what is this that he saith? A little while, we cannot tell what he's talking about. You know, there's a lot in the Bible, and people struggle with a lot of things in the Bible. And I know people who don't read the Bible because they say it's too hard. And the truth be told about it, that's why we have so many versions of the Bible out there today, because people said, well, this version is too hard to read, so we're going to write one a little easier to read. Well, the problem with dumbing something down is you've dumbed it down. <laughs> Anytime you start messing with the Word of God, you've made a mistake. I think it's just right just how it is. And let me say this, we're never going to understand anything in this Bible unless the Holy Spirit teaches us. And the best thing for you and I to do is not to go out and try to let the world interpret the Word. We need to get on our knees and say, Holy Spirit, teach me. Show me. Let me understand what it is I'm reading. These boys are standing around saying, we don't get it. We don't understand. I've been there. I've looked at circumstances in my life and said, God, what in the world are you doing? What is going on, you know? And then... God reveals it. But confusion is not something that's, uh, that's a new thing to us. We still have that today. People look around this old world and they wonder, uh, why has God let this stuff keep happening? Uh, the things like abortion and, and other sins, or, you know, the hot topic sins that are all over the place. And you look at the immorality that's in the world today. And some people say, well, why does God let that go on? I just don't understand. And some people have said, well, if God don't do something, he's going to have to apologize to Sodom and Gomorrah. Well, let me tell you, that's about as unscriptural as there is. God ain't going to apologize to nobody, okay? God will never apologize for anything. You know why? Because he's perfect. And if he's perfect, he made no mistake. When he wiped out Sodom and Gomorrah, he was justified in doing so. And if God lets this old earth keep spinning and let the mess keep going, I'll tell you, he's got a reason for it. He, the, shall not the judge, the Bible says, of all the earth do right? Yes, he will do right. It's not up to me to make heads or tails out of why God does what God does. It's up to me to trust that what God does is right. They're sitting here listening to Jesus teach, and, and they're trying to figure him out. You ever tried to figure God out? You ever tried to figure out how God works? I met people who tell me how God works. You ever met those people? I tell you exactly what God wants you to do. Oh, do so. Tell me. <laughs> I tell you exactly what God wants. Folks, listen. We get to talking amongst ourselves. We can get in trouble, and this confusion sets in. But then I want you to see this. When there's confusion, if we'll turn to Jesus, we'll get some clarification. Look at verse 19. Now, Jesus knew that they were desirous to ask him and said unto them aren't you glad he knows our thoughts now that ought to scare us but at the same time it sure ought to help us it ought to scare us that he does know our thoughts it ought to scare us that he does see everything he knows it all but at the same time it's also a great blessing because there's sometimes when I don't know how to, to talk to God about something have you ever been unsure of how to pray Maybe you're not sure what the right outcome is. I've been faced with situations just uh, situations rather just this week where I wasn't sure what the right thing to do was. It wasn't necessarily a, a moral decision so much as it was something else, but I didn't know what to do. And I didn't know how to pray. When you pray about something like that, is that God? I don't know. What do I do? Jesus knew what they were thinking. Jesus knew what was in their heart. And I'm thankful tonight that he knows what's in my heart because sometimes it just don't come out right. You ever try to tell somebody something and it just don't come out right? I read a thing the other day that said uh, a wife had texted a picture of a dress she had bought to her husband and said, does this make me look, you know, fat? And he typed back to her, no. But he tried to enunciate the no and add a couple of extra O's. Well, his phone auto-corrected it to cow. <laughs> yeah. 
and uh, I would like to move. It said, but no, it corrected no to move, and uh, I wouldn't want to be that guy, you know, when he got, when he got home. Sometimes uh, we just don't quite know how to communicate correctly. We don't know how to get things out like we want to. But Jesus gives clarification. He says, do ye inquire among yourselves that what I said a little while and you shall not see me and again a little while and you shall see me? He says, is that what you're struggling with? And that's part of prayer. That's part of what we're supposed to do in prayer is tell Jesus what we're struggling with. Tell him, say, Lord, I don't understand that. A lot of people think they're not supposed to tell God their problems. What's prayer for? A lot of people think they're not supposed to tell God that they're having trouble with something he said or something that's going on. Friend, that's what prayer is for. Jesus, uh, you remember another occasion when Jesus was giving a teaching on his flesh and his blood. They didn't understand that. They thought he was talking about cannibalism. And they just up and ran off. All they would have had to do is just said, Jesus, we have an awful lot of trouble with that, what you said. Can you help us understand my friend, look, if we don't understand something, the best thing to do is turn to Jesus and say, Lord, I don't understand it. Maybe I should understand it. Uh, you, ever, you ever had somebody tell you, well, I want to ask you a question, but this is a stupid question. I should know it. Sometimes we treat prayer that way. Sometimes we treat prayer like, well, we ought to know this, so I can't talk to God about it. My friend, look, you can take anything to him. You can take it all to him. He already knows, by the way, what's going on in here. And we should just do like the song says and take it to the Lord in prayer because that confusion can then get some clarification. Jesus says, verse 20, Verily, verily, I say unto you, then now he starts to tell them what he's talking about, that ye shall weep and lament, but the world shall rejoice. Now that's, that's hopeful, isn't it? We're living in a world like that. Let, now we can take this, I think it transitions very well into the New Testament church. We're living in a day where the world's having a, la having a field day. The world thinks we're the laughing stock, and they all but treat us that way. You can turn on the news, and you can see that Christians uh, are not looked very highly upon at all. And those of us that love God, our hearts ought to break for the sin in this world. Those of us that love the Lord Jesus Christ, we should be praying about the trouble and the moral issues and all the different things. We should be praying about that. That stuff should bother us. But I'll tell you, don't bother the world. Jesus said, the world shall rejoice. They're having a field day. But look what he says. You shall be sorrowful, but your sorrow shall be turned into joy. There's a day coming where it's all going to change. There's a day coming when this sin-filled, laden, cursed world is, for lack of a better expression, is going to get what's coming to them. There's a day coming when Jesus is going to step foot out and says, that is enough. What's that Amos uh, preacher that says, uh, enough is enough. I've had enough. I've had enough of this. I'm done with it. God looked at him and said, that's enough. I'm done. I'm fixed to get in the middle of this. One day Jesus will step out and he'll fix all this. And I'll tell you what he'll do. He'll take our broken hearts. He'll, break, he'll take our sorrowful hearts. Uh, a lady today, she was talking to me, and she was as pitiful as pitiful could be. Uh, she was saying how her family had uh, deserted her and how her children had forsaken her, and her husband was dead, and she was just crying her eyes out and said, I've got nobody. I don't have anybody. I'm all by myself. She was so brokenhearted. And uh, oftentimes we find ourselves like that, walking through this earth just broken. Now, uh, is that wrong? Well... Whether right or wrong, don't change the fact. Sometimes we're just broken vessels. And uh, Jesus says, however, one day I'm going to fix that. Weeping, the Bible says, will endure for a night, for a little while. But joy is going to come in the morning. And he says, uh, uh, verse 21. Now, I want you to see he gives not only some clarification to their confusion, but he gives a little comfort. He says, a woman, when she is in travail, hath sorrow." Because her hour is come. But as soon as she is delivered of the child, she remembereth no more the anguish. Okay? Now what that's mean, talking about a woman who gives birth to a child. How many of you here have multiple children? Yeah. Multiple children. When you had that first child, and uh, when you got ready to have that second one, did you think, man, that first one, that's so much trouble. That hurts so bad. I was so swolled up. 
I just didn't feel good. Didn't see my feet for three months. <laughs> Had to go to the bathroom every seven steps. I ain't doing that again. I ain't going to that hospital and, and going through that. I ain't doing it. Most of you probably didn't do that at all. Once that child is born, mamas, tell me if I'm wrong. Once that child is born, you forget it all. You'd been as big as that uh, girl on Willy Wonka that ate the blueberry. Y'all remember her? <laughs> Looked like me. You could have had, Brandy had some uh, blood pressure, a little bit of that, a little bit of sugar they had to keep an eye on, and all that stuff. But, I, but as soon as Bryce was born, none of that mattered. Probably the same way when Brent come around. We forget about it all. And uh, you see, it's the same thing. And a lot of people I've heard say, when I get to heaven, I'm going to find out why I had to go through what I went through. When I get to heaven, I'm going to ask God why this happened to me. What Jesus is saying right here, if you look very closely, is when you get to him, when we get home, none of it will matter. Now look, there's a lot of questions I have. Let's just be honest. There's questions. We've all got them, don't we? There's, if we could spend five minutes with the Lord, we've got some questions. Let's just be honest. And sometimes I think we wonder, it's like, when I get to heaven, I'm going to figure this out. I'm going to find out. Let me tell you something. When you set eyes on him, when you set eyes on him that loved you, when you put your eyes on him that died for you, that saved you, that's loved you, that's kept you, that's provided for you, that's held your hand, that's walked you through everything in this life, when you set your eyes on him, you'll forget it all. And you won't be saying, well, Lord, when I'm done praising you, we need to talk. You'll be just like me. All the bad will fade. And it won't be nothing but Jesus. Look what else he says. Verse 22. I love this verse. And ye now therefore have sorrow. Can we say amen to that? We do. We have sorrow. You know how many people's families are busted apart right now? Do you know how many churches are busted apart? You know how many families and, and marriages are busted up? You know the divorce rate amongst Christians is higher than divorce rates amongst lost people? How does that happen? We live in a world that is eat up with sorrow. Have you ever seen a time where there's more sickness? We're the most advanced we've ever been. Antibiotics, uh, all the different vaccinations we have, all the different medicines we've discovered, all the different things we can cure. But yet we still can't deal with cancer. We can't deal with many diseases that we just can't touch. Is there a family in here that's not been affected by cancer probably not a one of us what is all that and and it's sorrow it's a broken heart you look at this world and you think man this is so hard I've learned that getting older ain't no fun Bobby is it fun for you you ain't old yet are you Bobby you're not old but Bobby getting older ain't no fun because everybody else gets older and as everybody else gets older the stages of life progress and when you do what I do it's pitiful you see that and you think it's just bro it break your heart Jimmy but one day Jesus will wipe that last tear one day he'll carry us over the Jordan to the shores of home and we won't worry no more and ye therefore now verse 22 have sorrow but look at this but I will see you again <laughs> ain't that good Ain't that good? He says, hey, you're going, to, you're going to hurt for a little while. Now, by the way, don't expect to live in an earth that is cursed and get through unscathed. This earth is cursed because of what we did. You understand that? We broke God's law. We couldn't keep God's law. Sin came into the picture. That wasn't God's fault. That was our fault. I was born into it. I was eat up with it. I still fight with it even still today. It's my fault. Sorrow is what I deserve. I don't deserve the good things of God. Do you? Do you think you do? You don't. We don't deserve anything good of God. But yet he gives us so much. Sorrow. It's going to be there. Don't ever get the idea that if I pray hard enough, if I go to church long enough, if I give enough tithes, if I read my Bible, don't ever get in your head that you're going to escape sorrow. It's part of it. It's going to be there. Was it the tin man and the Wizard of Oz? 
said hearts will never be or was it the Wizard of Oz himself he gave the ten man a heart you know you remember and uh, when Dorothy was going back to Kansas he said my heart's breaking and the Wizard of Oz says I guess hearts will never be practical till they can be made unbroken that's pretty good but while we're on this earth our hearts can be broken but one day we'll go home one day Jesus says I'll come get you I'll be back he says and you now for have sorrow but I will see you again. And look at this. And your heart shall rejoice. Have you ever hurt so bad you could feel it? I, I, I've, I've had that happen. I mean a pain, uh, an emotional pain or a spiritual pain or something that is just so heartbreaking that it just cuts down into you. I'll be honest with you right now. When, when uh, Sheila passed away, when they called me, that hurt mostly because it was such a shock to us you know but I could feel it I mean I could feel my heart almost hurt it's weird but one day that won't happen no more one day as the Wizard of Oz said hearts will be unbreakable Jesus says your heart one day will rejoice can you imagine a day when there will be no more sorrow no more pain it will just be joy Joy unspeakable, the song says, and full of glory. Look at this last verse. And your joy no man taketh from you. I'm glad I got something man can't take away from me. Can man take away what you've got? Then you better get something else. Anything that anybody can take away from you ain't good enough, my friend. Get what God gives. Get what Jesus gives. He giveth more grace. That's what man can't take away. Listen, all the demons in hell can't take that away from me. I'm saved to the uttermost, and I know that I am. And can't no man take that away from me. I can't take it away from myself. The devils and demons in hell can't take it away from me. What shall separate us from the love of God? Nothing. Nothing. And your joy no man taketh from you. I love verse 22. That's hope. That's hope. When it gets hard, and it's going to, the Bible gives us the idea that it's going to get harder. I hate to break it to you, but it just may get harder for you. My prayer is that it don't. I, really, truly, truly. But it just might get harder for you. But when the sorrow is around you, remember John 16, 22, and ye now therefore have sorrow, but I will see you again. And your heart will rejoice. And your joy, nobody's going to take away from you. Jesus said, when I come get you, it's going to be okay. You know what I'm looking for? If we was to make tonight a timeline, Jimmy, and stretch it from this corner of the church to that corner of the church and put every biblical event on this timeline. Start from the Genesis and go through the Revelation. Put everything biblical on this timeline. Do you know what's next? There is something next from right now. From right now, this minute, there is something next. What is the next thing that's going to happen? People may wonder that. Is it tribulation? Is it the Armageddon? Is it the end of the world? A lot of people think the world's going to blow up. North Korea's going to bomb us. We're going to bomb them. We're going to blow ourselves to kingdom come. If that happens, I'll tell you, I won't be around to see it. Because you know the next thing on, if you will, God's calendar? The rapture. Behold, I saw a door opened in heaven. Jesus has been knocking for a while. Chapter 4, verse 1 of the Revelation. The church is not mentioned again until, I believe, chapter 19. From chapter 4 to chapter 19 are all your bowls, your vows, your seals, your trumpets, your destruction, your doom, your tribulation. All that is in the middle section. The church is not mentioned one time. Why is that? Well, I'm glad you asked. Behold, I saw a door open in heaven, and I heard a voice. Come on home come up hither come up hither I don't know what he's going to say but I'm going to answer that call when I hear it and let me tell you this I'll tell you one even better than that you ready to go you ready Jimmy if, if Jesus steps out on the cloud like Brandy sings about and he calls us home are you ready to go right now guess what if that don't happen and I end up at Higgins or wherever's big enough to hold me guess where I'll be just take a guess if you say hell you're wrong some people think that you know where I'll be 
if Jesus don't come rapture me out and I go by way of all the earth and go by the grave I'm going either way I'm a winner either way if I go or if I stay I can't lose why because what Jesus has done for me this I recall to mind therefore have I hope it is of the Lord's mercies we are not consumed they are renewed every day great is our faithfulness behold you'll have sorrow for a little while but I'll be back and when I come get you your heart will never break again and you'll have joy that nothing will ever touch that gives me chill bumps what do you call him Angie what do you call it? Holy Ghost bumps or something like that you ever watch Angie sing Child of the King she starts rubbing she's getting excited is what it is amen hey when we get to heaven we'll have him all time Angie because we'll be with him so listen child of God keep praying keep talking to Jesus if you get confused take it to Jesus you're not sure what to do take it to Jesus what's in front of you don't make no sense you don't see no way out it's hurting you you're broken you're busted you're in a mess give it to Jesus he already sees it he's already got the answer he will clarify it and then he'll comfort you and one day we'll be comforted forever we won't need there won't be no more confusion there won't be no more need to clarify anything we'll be with him forever are you ready to go let's stand together all around the church tonight as we stand together